Well, you wouldn't just put rolls of wheat like that. Um, as many of you will know, uh, Oxford Botanic Garden was established as a physic garden in 1621, where plants were grown to teach the university's medical students about the medical properties of plants. And it seems germane that four centuries later we should be celebrating the publication of a new herbal, documenting the use of plants in 21st century herbal medicine. This project was conceived in um, here, at least, in 2018, but its roots were put down much earlier than that, as I'll explain. Rana, um, who I think everyone knows, but um, Rana Wade, visited Simon Hiscock and me in 2018 with three large leather-bound books, all written in Arabic, with pictures of plants, and we sat and admired these books together in the library. And then Rana told us a story. Rana's father, Abdul Jalil Ibrahim al Kaguli, was born in 1934 in Baghdad. And after graduating from the College of Agriculture in Baghdad in 1959, he was appointed to Iraq's Ministry of Higher Education as an agricultural engineer, where he remained until 1980. And together with his wife, Nazik Saeed al Jarrah, thank you, a biology teacher. They had a family of seven children with whom they shared their passion for natural history. And following his appointment to the Ministry of Higher Education, Abdul Jalil Abrahim um, ran a, a 40 hectare farm near, I'm sorry, Rana, I'm going to do this a lot, near Radwaniwa, Radwaniwa in central Iraq, where he cultivated plants, including medicinal herbs. And in 1988, um, he was diagnosed with diabetes, which he treated himself using medicinal herbs that he grew on his farm. And so began his idea to develop a community practice in traditional herbal medicine. And he dedicated a part of his house to the preparation of medicinal herbs that, that were grown on the farm. And the practice grew in popularity and importance, eventually serving the whole of the Kark region in Baghdad. And he called it al Shab, and he was known as the doctor of al Shab. Abdul Jalil's work in delivering herbal medicine to the community was widely appreciated in Iraq. And he shared his findings um, across the country, for example, speaking about, um, about his treatment of diabetes using herbal medicine at, at conferences. Tragically, during the invasion of Baghdad in 2003, al Shab was targeted by an explosion. And much of this work, including the meticulous records, documents and the plants, were destroyed along with the practice. But committed to practicing herbal medicine, he continued to work with communities to dispense plant-based medicines um, in Mansur, Baghdad, for a further six years, at a time when communities were reliant on plants for healthcare. By documenting the knowledge he gained while working with local communities, he compiled a comprehensive herbal flora of Iraq in three volumes, uh, the books that Rana brought to our attention in 2018. And they contained a wealth of information on hundreds of plants and their traditional uses and remedies. Tragically, in 2009, Abdul Jalil was killed during a terrorist attack on Al Lucifer. His flora and the wealth of knowledge and cultural heritage that it contained survived. They were bequeathed to his daughter Rana in 2011 in Syria, which was the only safe meeting point at that time by Rana's mother for her safety. In 2018, we advised the John Fell Fund for money to translate and authenticate the volumes, and we were successful. And with wonderful support from Emma Webster and Hattie Warburton, who will wait, <laughs> um, um, they supported the herbal for the life of the project. And once we received the funding, the project was underway, and Shahina Gazamfa, um, who's the leading authority in the UK on Middle Eastern floors at Kew, joined the project. Um, and Sh Shahina will say a few words in a moment as well. And this herbal simply would not have materialised had she not. Shahina was instrumental and she actually wrote the bulk of the descriptions um, uh, that you see in, in, in the flora. The herbal flora that we're celebrating today is the product of Ab Abdul Jalil's work and devotion to plant-based medicine in Iraq. Rana's commitment to seeing the work published and then a dedicated community of purpose spanning Oxford and Kew. And our hope is that his work will be celebrated in, in Iraq for generations to come. Um, what does the herbal contain? Well, firstly, um, if I may, I'll just say a, a few words on why traditional herbal medicine in Iraq is so important. 
So plant-based remedies date back to the beginning of humankind, and traditional herbal medicine in Iraq has a particularly long and rich history, which can be traced back to the Sumerian. Okay. I can't read. I'm an archaeologist. I work in a museum a lot, so I talk to people through objects. So these are my objects today. Um, I echo everyone is at Chris, and thank you very much, and uh, thank you to everyone. And hi to everyone here. My family, can you shake my hands here? They're family here. Uh, my friends, lovely friends, and my colleagues, and everyone from the group as well. Um, so actually, what I'm trying to say here is actually, it's a story of, um, a, it's a personal story. So this book is, for me, is a personal story. It's my father. Uh, the father I, um, I left, in 2000 and I thought I will go for one year and go back to see him one year just to get married and then come back and I could do so this is actually um, it's the first time I, I will talk uh, about it with everyone it's, it's the grieving so this is really um, very special um, for me to be part of this uh, uh, project and just to say to him and his soul um, that um, we miss you a lot and we miss father a lot I, I, could, I, I didn't hug him when I left Iraq because I thought because I don't want to say bye to him and I want to come and see him and, and hug him again but I couldn't so this is the only thing a little bit um, to say thank you to him so this is very personal for me it's not uh, it's really one story of the war and just sharing but uh, that's why I formed the Iraqi Women Art and War Project to share other stories from other women uh, um, and how we miss Iraq and all this life because of the war. So here I'm sharing uh, the art collage I did because I like doing art work and uh, I share my uh, feeling to art work. So this is actually, you can come later and see it, it's, uh, it's uh, my father and my mother and uh, my father in a different uh, uniform and when he was in Iraq serving the herbs and when he was a soldier in Iraq as well and the hand here actually is representing my mother hand because she hand the book to me and I hand it to you as well so it's, uh, the, the hand is like passing the book to everyone and it will carry on passing and passing hopefully to another generation and we support so and and i've collected all the artwork um, thank you very much chris for this is really <laughs> special i never expect that it's really nice and it's all here his uh, artwork place and other plants and um this is how i shared um and there is a grave here because after 18 years thank god i met uh, went back to iraq after 18 years but i i went to his grave not to hug him so i went to his grave to see him his grave. So this is me um, crying on um, in his grave with my mother. And uh, my mother, she couldn't come today because she's in Iraq, and she can't uh, apply for a visa as well because of the war. And there is always problems for Iraqis to come and visit everyone uh, and their relatives. And when we go back, it's not easy as well because of the war. And uh, and Ukrainian now what's wrong with people so the war is destroying a lot of people as well as the people um, near to us now so this is my artwork this actually in the book but it's not um, uh, for some reason not clear as this one here in the book but I will put this as well on my website um, and if you're interested to support Iraqi women art and war project please uh, do contact me I have only this <laughs> <laughs> today <laughs> but uh, all the connection here um, and you can take picture I'll put it here as well and then um, please uh, fund us to carry on working with the lovely people like Chris and Shahina and everyone here and then we uh, talk to you guys as people without politics about civilian in Iraq they are still suffering and people here they want to learn about um, them and support each other. Um, I have uh, an exhibition in the Museum of Oxford called of Ordinary Things exhibition and I have a leaflet here. <laughs>
<laughs> so this is the exhibition and also take picture of, that is actually um, cute uh, and share with everyone who wants to visit um, it's in the Museum of Oxford and also we have an exhibition just launched today or yesterday in uh, Woodstock um, uh, Soldier Museum of Woodstock it's about um, uh, refugee week exhibition and it's all there for one month if you like um, so thank you very much for today and I hope you enjoyed the food oh, it's much. all yeah. Iraqi definitely made by lovely Iraqi yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah so thank you for uh, everyone coming and I have the baby this baby lovely baby <laughs> this is actually called Jude Jalil and it's like my husband uh, my father's name so Jude, can I Thank you, Tanya, for bringing us. Uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, welcome to all new faces, lovely faces. My husband there uh, finally managed to park. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And enjoy the rest of the food. I'm here if you want to go. Thank you. Thank you.